Thanks, uh, John, very much for inviting me to um, speak about Direction's code. So today I'm going to talk to you guys about the declarative power of CSS selectors. I love that you got. Um, so I'm going to ask everyone a question. You need to give me some feedback, right? So, okay, so it's a multiple choice. So what can CSS do? Is it A, can style a website, B, can reduce your HTML, C, can reduce your JavaScript, D, it can be used for testing, or E, of the above? Who can give me an answer? Woo! You got it correctly and you don't get a prize, I'm sorry. Um, so, you, some of you probably don't believe me and you're probably like, yeah, whatever, you know. CSS, we just use it to make a page look pretty, you add some colors to your text, you can change your background color, that's about it. But, like John said, CSS is actually really powerful and there's actually so much you can do with it. And it is, you know, more than just a bunch of classes and IDs these days. Um, there's so much more you can do with CSS3 and the upcoming, upcoming level four selectors as well. Um, so today I'm going to show you some real world examples of where you can use CSS selectors um, to in fact do all those things that I've just mentioned. So let's look, look at some CSS level three selectors. The first one, attribute selector. So say we want to style this um, search box you probably want to go and add a class that says class equals search bar and then apply some styles to that class. But you can, we can make this a little bit simpler. We can actually style this by using the attribute selector. So the syntax for that is quite simple. You just have your attribute on the left equals to some kind of value you pass in. So if we go back to that search box, we can just remove the class completely and we can just style the, um, the input uh, using the type equal search um, selector uh, attribute. So we can actually do this with um, when you've got some microdata on your, on your content as well. So say if you've got like a, a telephone um, on your website and you've got some microdata hooked into it, uh, you can style the, the, um, the telephone number with um, specific style and maybe like give it like a little telephone icon or something. And you can do that all by just using the attribute selector. So you can do substring matching with your attribute um, selector as well. So there are a few different substring matching you can do. Um, what this means is that you can actually check the value of the specified attribute for a string match. So there are a few different ones. Um, and today I'm just going to show you the ends with substring. So the syntax for that is um, pretty much the same as uh, the attribute selector. You just need to add a dollar sign in front of your equals. So that is saying, you know, if your attribute ends with the value that you give it, then give it some styles. So say you want to have um, some kind of download link for, for your user and you want to tell them what sort of document it actually is. Normally we can just go in and add a span and you've got some um, classes to give it the icon for and then you give it the, um, the, the specific, uh, specific icon, the, the PDF icon um, on that span. But we can make this simpler by removing the span and we can use the ends with substring to say, if the href ends with .pdf, then give it the PDF icon. Um, so basically the, what this does is that it, the attribute selector can determine what icon to display just simply based on the href. Um, and you can quite easily do this with you know, a bunch of different icons. You can do it with like JPEGs, can word doc, and you can, quite, you can just do this by CSS. You don't have to worry about adding a span and work out what classes you need to put in. You can just do it all by the attribute selector. So next one I want to look at is the not selector. So this is an interesting one because it's basically doing the opposite of what your normal selectors are doing. So what this does is that uh, um, if the element does not match an argument that you pass in, then apply the styles. So the not selector accepts um, a bunch of arguments there, and they have to be simple selectors. So that includes your um, classes, your IDs, and your attribute selector that I have just mentioned before. So say we have a box here, 
uh, you've got a heading, it's got a paragraph and then a list. And we want to apply the color green on everything except the heading. And we want the heading to just use the default black. So we can do, the, do this with the not selector to say if uh, inside the banner, if the element is not an H1, then give it the color green. What I find this selector useful for is if you want to test accessibility. So it can be used for testing. So you probably don't believe me, but I'll show you how. So here we've got an image here. Um, it doesn't have an old attribute. And I'm sure you guys know that you know, old attributes, meaningful old attributes, um, is, is really important for, for images. Um, and uh, so here we want to say if the image does not have an old attribute, then give it a nice big border. And you can just tell your, you, tell your developers that, hey, you're missing an old attribute. Uh, you can do this with tables as well. Um, I find a lot of times people tend to forget that the tables need a table sum summary for accessibility reason. And so here we've got a table without a table summary. And we can say, if the table does not have a table summary, then hey, why you no summary? Um, I find this is really good for testing accessibility because you can just see at a glance where all the prob problematic areas are without the need to dive into your HTML and try to find where your images or your tables are and see if they actually have the summary or the old attribute. Then we have the target selector. So I think this is probably one of the most underused selectors and is one of my favorites. Um, so what this selector allows you to do is that you can use it to style the element that matches the URL fragment identifier, which is the hash part in the URL. So in, in this case, the fragment identifier would be the hash common part. So where, how can we use this and where is it actually being used? It's actually being used on the Wikipedia website. You can say when you click on the number, it jumps to the uh, relevant footnote um, and actually highlights the one that is actually referencing. It just makes it a lot easier for you to see which part of the page you're supposed to be looking at when there's so much text around it. So how do we do this? Super simple. You just have a link with the href that matches the ID of the um, element you're trying to target. And in this case, it will be the paragraph. So we just say P target, give a background color, and then we can animate in the, fade in the color as well. So this is what it looks like. You click on it, you can see that, oh, it looks green. Um, you can see that it actually gets highlighted. We can actually use target selector for simple interaction as well, such as we can use it to create a JavaScript-free accordion, just like magic. Um, so we want to recreate this accordion uh, so I'm just, in the HTML part, I'm just showing you the, the first panel um, in the accordion just to keep things simple. So by default, we want to keep the, the content hidden. So we're giving it max height, zero. We give it overflow hidden and opacity zero as well. And we, we want to uh, animate it. So the reason I'm using max height instead of height is because I don't want to give the content um, a fixed height, a uh, content area a fixed height. Um, and unfortunately, you can't go from height zero and animate to height auto in CSS. So that's why I'm using a max height. So and here I'm saying, you know, if the accordion content is being targeted, then give a max height of 400 pixel in this case. So this is a little bit hacky in a way because we have to guess what is the maximum amount of content you can have in that area so that we can um, animate it. And this is what it's like in action. So you click on the anchor, and then we animate it and close the, the other one. So this is all done by CSS without JavaScript. So the advantage of that is that it adds um, the ID uh, of the panel to your URL as well. So you can quite simply just take the URL and share it across your website, and it will relev uh, it'll, uh, it'll open up the uh, relevant um, section and completely done it in CSS as well. So another good thing about the select, uh, CSS selectors is that you can use them in your JavaScript. Um, you can combine it with um, query selector and query selector all. And so if you just want to do simple things like selecting some DOM element, you can just use query selector to do it uh, with your CSS selectors. And you don't have to use jQuery or rely on jQuery to do it. 
Um, that is if you don't need to support IE7. Uh, you can also pass in really complicated CSS selectors, and you can still under your JavaScript can still understand it. So the power of select, uh, CSS selectors extends beyond just your CSS. You can use it um, quite heavily in your JavaScript as well. And lastly, I just want to show you guys what's coming up in um, CSS level four selectors. So this is currently in the working draft, so it's probably not going to. You, you won't be able to see it until, um, anytime too soon. So the one selector that most people, definitely me, who wish for the most is a parent selector. So we have a list here. Um, one of the list items has a class of active. So say we want to uh, style the UL when there is um, a class of active. You can actually do this at the moment in CSS. You have to use JavaScript. Um, and then we can do, but if we have the level four select, uh, parent selector, then you can quite simply do it in just CSS to say, if there is a class active within your UL, then style the UL. And that is done by um, you giving the exclamation mark on this element you want to style. So the skin tag of that is still changing, so it might not be an exclamation mark in the future. Then we have the match pseudo class. Um, so say we want to apply the same styles on all the different LIs. Um, currently, we need to list them all out like this, LI active, LI um, hash item one. But with matches, we can keep things a little bit simpler. Um, we can just go, if the LI matches this bunch of selectors that we pass in, then give it the specific style. You can do this with anchors as well. Um, at the moment, we have to go A hopper, A focus, A active. With matches, a bit simpler, you can just go, if A has this state, the anchor has this state, then apply the styles. Um, we also have the uh, local link selector coming up. So what this is used for is to identify internal links. And you can pass in the number as a parameter um, to target the different levels um, of your URL. So say you're, we're on the web directions website. So the web directions would be your local link. And if we want to style the link specifically, you can just go anchor local link and you pass in the number zero to indicate it's at the root and you give it a color green. And if you want to go one level deep, you can just pass in the, the number one to say if the local link is one level deep, then give it another style. So what makes this more useful is when you combine it with the not selector. So say on the web direction website, there's a link to link to Twitter. Um, so that's an external link. Um, at the moment, if we want to give it the little icon, we have to give it a, a span. But with local link, we can say, if the anchor uh, is not a local link, then you can give it um, the little icon that way. So it just reduces your HTML and the complexity of it. So all this talks about CSS selectors. What about browser support? Um, you can see Chrome, Firefox, etc., cetera, are really good. IE, if uh, you, you can actually use the not and target selectors in IE 9 and below. CSS level for selectors, sorry, none of the browsers support it at the moment, um, but they are coming, hopefully, sometime soon. So I hope this talk has given you some ideas of how you can actually utilize the power of C CSS selectors um, to help you more with your development. And I hope you remember that you know CSS is really powerful, and you can do you can use it to do so much more than just styling a web page. Thanks very much.